introduce myself first. I'm Anthony Wallace, I'm the Vice President here at the uh, Student Students Union. Uh, and my main school is DTA and London. Uh, Connor, you're next. Yo, so I'm Connor, I'm the President. My school is LSE. Uh, I'll go next. Uh, I'm Tuesday Forrest. I'm one of the vice presidents of the outgoing team and my schools are law policing and forensics and I'm also the officer representative for London. I'm Carter Fitzpatrick. I'm one of the VPs of outgoing too. Uh, my school has been HSC this year, so health and social care, which is looking after Stafford and Shrewsbury and my pronouns are they them. Cool. We'll just move straight into Hannah. Hey everyone, so I'm Hannah. I'm the president-elect for the next year, so I will be taking over from Connor. I don't have a school yet. Hayden. Hello, my name is Hayden. Uh, I'm also going to uh, vice president-elect. Um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Joe. Uh, yeah, I'm Joe. I'm vice president-elect for next year, so hi. You better start getting comfortable with this team because you look so uncomfortable right now. You've got to get used to it. You've got to relax. People can feel it through the screen, trust me. Um, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, so I've prepped you a couple of questions. I asked you a, a put in the chat earlier. We won't go straight into them yet. So normally how the format of this works is we'll start with like a really boring fact we picked up this week or something we've done really interesting. Um, so I'll just start with an interesting fact. If you haven't got one, that's fine. Um, but normally the current officer team have one. So my current fact is I didn't know a goldfish was a carp, and I don't know if you know about carp, but carp can grow real big depending on their environments, and they can get big fish. There's my boring fact. If anyone can think of anything else, if not, we'll just move on to the next thing. Doesn't really matter, really. I have found a fact. Cool. Barbie Doll's full name is Barbara Millicent Roberts. She's from Willows, Wisconsin, and her birthday is March 9th, 1959. Her middle well, name is Millicent. Barbie well, is uh, Barbara Millicent Roberts. <laughs> that's definitely like some elitist American stuff that. I think it's an American hard. fact page. 100%. 100%. Anyone else? It's not a fact everyone knows, but it's a fact that I played my first flag tournament this week and we lost every game. <laughs> hey, but I stand witness is the most I've ever seen Connor do in terms of performance and he smashed it. So that's like a backhanded that. compliment now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you balled out, know. man. You fully I balled out. I second that part on him doing very well. It was fun. It was actually really fun. And if we start, if we actually make a flag team at the uni, I'd probably join it because it was, it it took the, the contacts out. But my ankles are now not in a good way. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's an interesting one. Um, don't want to delve too much into the football side of things, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something we're going to be considering in the future for sure. Um, so yeah, um, I guess I'll start with the first first question, and I guess the first question is going to be, how you all feeling about it? Start that. It's being <laughs> being elected. Oh, uh, what, I, wanted what, what I wanted to check. <laughs> what, else, what else are we going to be talking about right now? <laughs> I don't know. What are you have for lunch? <laughs> How are you um, feeling? Obviously, the, obviously, it's like three weeks on since elections happened, and it still doesn't feel real. Sometimes I still can't but entirely believe that you know been elected in um i'm honestly incredibly excited to get started um i would get started now if i could but obviously but i can only do talks at the moment i can't do any physical stuff until we officially start in july but yeah very excited yeah so how was the first time running then was that is, 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 is it as you expected or um so this is this is technically not my first campaign because um, for the past three years I've been on other people's campaign teams. So this is technically my fourth. This has been technically my fourth election, just the first time doing it for me. Um, it was very odd, do, like actually doing all this stuff for myself and not doing them for another person's campaign. I thought it was a lot more pressured when it was all when it was trying to get myself in than them. Um, but it was also a lot more fun and. I really like coming up with a campaign and like 
um, like having fun with my mates doing it all. It was so it was really fun and nerve wracking the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet. Hayden, how about you? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I, uh, it's quite uh, quite a weird one. Um, definitely has not kicked in yet. We'll probably will do when we start actually doing stuff. Um, it was a lot more, uh, in my opinion, actually more intense than I thought. I definitely thought it was it was definitely a good experience. It was crazy. Um, I've never done any election slash campaigning type stuff before. So it was real eye opener to like what you can do, what you can't do, like how the system works and like just kind of doing it. But overall, I, I thought it was really great. Yeah, fair play, fair play. Chat over yourself. Um, well, something again, um, it's just weird. Um, it's just weird having like random people come to you on campus saying, Oh, is that Choto? and you're saying, um, Yeah, um, just trying to like introduce myself, but it's weird and um, it's just still unrealistic to be honest. But yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, well, um, fair play, I guess. As the second time for me running, because that's what it was, I guess, in my first opinion. Uh, I, I, for me, I was, I was to, I guess, I came off being ill to run a campaign. Say ill, I was, I had reconstruction surgery, so like, it for me it was kind of like, oh, I've got to do all this stuff. To do it in. So it's kind of like, oh great, how am I gonna be able to spend all the next week or two to try and run a campaign and try and run? But here we are, and it's sort of panned out. So. Yes, for me it was interesting. There was a little added bit of pressure there. Um, last year was the gamble of whether I was even to pass my degree and sacrifice my degree to be an officer, or and this year the pressure was I have less than two weeks to try and figure this out and try and be all over it. So yeah, I guess that's sort of where it is. I took a, a, a lot relaxed approach in certain areas because I knew it would be very social media led. Um, but in terms of the overall, I think, yeah, there's that sort of added pressure for me because I just didn't have that extra. Even even last year was a last minute decision to, to run, but uh, like at least then I had like an idea of what I was going to do this year. I was like, okay, where are we going? Yeah, run? that was pretty much the same boat yeah. I was in uh, for what you did last year. So yeah. I didn't really think about it until nearly I think like middle of March, like just literally about as nominations were about to close. And I was like, you know, why not go for it in a yeah it's been hectic i've only just about finished my university stuff uh, like assignments i think about a week ago um well like five days ago i've just been relaxing since <laughs> I, I don't i don't blame you mate i really don't blame um tuesday do you want to ask the next question yep uh, sorry i've muted myself just in case the delivery turns up while we're doing this <laughs> um what was your favorite take from other people's campaigns during the leadership race open to everyone I think that one. <laughs> <laughs> um. I said campaign videos for me. I don't, never really had time to actually make a campaign video but seeing what other people can like come up with was quite uh, kind of interesting in a way. I uh, liked how they were produced and presented in a way so look I can actually to be fair so that's what I liked. I quite like I quite liked how like this year everyone everyone who was running was seen was like really friendly with each other and like at one point a bunch like a bunch of us were able to like just hang out and chat and stuff and we were like discuss ideas and people we've said since some of us have said since that it'd be good for, to like meet like exchange ideas so that even the people who haven't got in um we could like maybe we could work on some of their stuff. Hey. Ooh. I mean, specifically, I can't really pick on anything. I guess probably right off hand is definitely like everybody did something really. I don't know. I think this year's best thing probably just the intensity again. Just kind of, I don't know, maybe also because I, I was running, so I'm actually a part of it and kind of see it and kind of care more compared to if I wasn't running. But I don't know. I just think like, probably favorite take is just how everything went down and everybody's involvement and I don't know guys like very passionate about running and everyone's ideas and they all came up very very well 
Um, just to involve like the current team as well, did you guys see anything standing out from the campaigns that you thought would be important moving forward for the next team? I think it's a really hard question to answer because you always see the same things repeated every year. <clears throat> I think with this year having COVID, obviously no surprises, it was mostly digital. Um, I think seeing how different candidates presented themselves online was a big difference. You could really see who was going with, you know, that kind of one big impression post compared to the more of a, uh, I guess what we saw was like manifesto spotlights. So a lot of people posted out separate areas. Um, so I think it's kind of hard to compare what I what what I thought was different to previous years to be honest. I, I just think I think candidates adapted well to the to the situation they were put in really. Um and clearly you four stood out quite well. <laughs> um I think sorry, I'm just gonna add to this because I I had a really good thing. I a lot of the times when we do the leadership race a lot of people focus on events and I think this year was one of the standout years where events wasn't the massive thing a lot more candidates were centered around the student experience off the back of covid and how it will be normal or how is their education going to change or be improved with everything we've learned post covid so i th i think those are some really cool things that came out of the leadership race that we wouldn't we would see sometimes but not to the level that we have this year i think mm. yeah Anyone else want to add to anything? No. Sorry, this isn't nice. I think I think for me, um, so I didn't get a chance to do the like the nice Stasny videos, but I think just putting out a simple video works really well. I think that helped me a lot. I got a lot of personal messages when I put out those simple videos, and also the GIF, the GIF idea of you making like I always wanted that sort of post uh, Harry Potter GIF like serious black popping out the bloody screen thing and we managed to get our sword so for me on a personal level i thought they were really quite different to what i did last year and i really enjoyed that process i think of learning how am i going to be a little how am i differentiate a little bit so they really worked for me i think um and i got a lot of comments for the gift as well to be honest which was quite nice because I, I just didn't know we were going to be able to pull it off and then we did so that was pretty it's pretty good hands down to terry for helping me with that one um so yeah i think that's that's, that's my Thing I think I'll, I'd, I'd recommend to whoever comes in next year probably will be in January's video next year when everyone goes. So what are you going to suggest on the leadership this year? And we're like, well, get a gif out there, get a gif and get a personal video message out there. And yeah, so I think that's kind of what I'm going to be pushing forward. Um, Carter, do you want to ask your question next? Yes. Am I unmuted or muted? You are unmuted. fully unmuted. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, so what's everyone excited about most? <laughs> Anyone? Everything. <laughs> I mean, I'm just really, I'm, I'm just really excited to get started. I literally would start now if I could. <laughs> like, I've already had, like, I've already he been in. I've, I t kind of already have started. So I've been in meetings about the cast already. I've spoken to um, Sam from the Sports Centre about some stuff for next year as well already. So like, I'm doing talky bits. So that as soon as I'm officially in office, I can like get started on things straight away. Nice. Shota? <laughs> um, not your first rodeo, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I'm looking forward to varsity, I guess. It, hopefully COVID is gone-ish by then, but I think mean, that's something I'm looking forward to the most because it's when everyone comes together, it's like a community spirit. Um, and playing sports, what I love, so that should be fun and interesting. That makes two of us. I can't wait to hit someone yeah. in, a, in a sporty <laughs> way. Sporty yeah. way. Sporty way. Nice, Connor. Do you want to ask the last question? Are we not listed to what Hayden's excited about? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> My bad. No, I just leave the call. It's okay. No. <laughs> Look, you're um, getting crying out. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I'm actually really excited about overall, like being in this position as a, like up to so far i've had that most like part-time jobs but being a student you don't really well for, from my years here so i'm a final year student and i'm about to graduate so from my three years here i didn't really interact with union too much until maybe the last 
one and a half years when I kind of like joined um, maybe like American football societies and like kind of interacting with the uni more. So I think, I don't know, but that being excited to see how things work and kind of how I can actually maybe see to get more interactions, I guess, from students, if like maybe in my first year, um, if there was more interactions or maybe if I just saw something that would make me see, hey, I want to interact with this uni more rather than just I go here to study. So, yeah. Are you excited about anything, Am? Um, I guess for me, it's about not being locked away in a house for a year. I think that's, that's <laughs> primarily where I'm at of things. Uh, no, it's it's interesting because it's kind of been a little bit unfortunate for, for me and Carter in terms of we've, we've been in office, but we've not had the actual officer experience in terms of what you'd be required to do. So, you know, the integrating and catching people in the street and, you know, just having food and being in the socials and having events and just being essentially around and talking to people. We haven't had that experience, really. In fact, actually, we haven't. I think the closest we got to it was when we had to sort out the flooding and we had to then disappear to, to, to you know, hotels and stuff and help um, facilitate that. So it was kind of like the closest we ever got to it. And that wasn't really, a, uh, shall we say, a, a scenario where you could be like, hi, how are you doing? How's things going? Because people just give you a deadpan look and be like, I want my bloody bed. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, like now. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's a bit more of a concern there. So we didn't really get to be great, but that's fine. I guess for me, it's that, you know, not being locked away, um, a bit more of the local events and getting stuck in around the students and, and seeing what, what they're doing on a day to day basis and, and talk to them. And I guess my third thing would be there's a couple of things that didn't hit my manifesto I want to try and get off. Creative Sales was a big one. We sort of pushed it for November, for the end of November going into January. And then because we got hit with COVID 3.0 in Jan, it was kind of like we just had to bin it. So it was kind of like, I want to make sure that's, that gets off the ground because that, that's going to tie into, and you, you guys will figure this out some, well, you'll, you'll know about it sooner or later. It's like the um, community, like the community thing they're doing at the university right now where they're trying to involve the community more. So that'll help tie into that to some degree. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of excited to get that going off the ground. And plus football, I'll be able to play football then too. You know, on a, on a selfish level, I might actually be able to play by June, November, January. So that's kind of it, really. Jeez. Um, and plus, my, bro my brother's actually moved down here. So I'm excited to see him be a student here. That's going to be weird for me. Probably uh, he was an afterthought. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, is he at the joint stallions? Well, I don't know. I don't know. He's, he, also so, yes. has a dodgy, he also has a dodgy left knee. Oh, and he's, everybody he's, has dodgy knees. Everyone has dodgy knees. the line then. We think it's genetic who knows uh, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah he's i don't know we'll talk to him. we'll try and get him around i just don't think it's going to be his ball game honestly he loves football too much he loves being a defender of football so i don't know we'll see but that's kind of yeah so just to reel off a few things that are i'm sort of excited for next year really um so that's kind of like the main four questions that we had oh no connor you gotta ask your question dude what are you doing? which one's left the expectation what didn't you expect yeah, what didn't you expect into a yeah, race? Yeah, so there you go. So, so in terms of you four, I guess, running in the race, what what did things didn't you guys expect to happen or didn't expect to see? <laughs> I didn't expect people to be so quiet. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say about people, like... Um... I think there was like 18, 19, was there candidates? There was 24 going, like, to start with, yeah. Like all of them going for like four positions. I was like, I'll speak to my mates. I was like, I don't think I can actually get win this. Wasn't like, it could be like an impossible task. But um, yeah, it was quite a shock to be fair. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, when I initially put my name in the pot, because um, obviously, normally leadership race is done in march it's before easter um so when i first put my name in i wasn't expecting to be able to do any physical campaigning i thought the whole thing was going to be digital because i thought we were still going to be in lockdown um but then obviously they um postponed it till april so we were able to actually go out and like be on campus and say like speak to people which after a year of lockdown was such a novelty so yeah i wasn't expecting to be able to do that when i first considered running Hayden? <laughs> um, I don't know. I guess I don't, I don't know the 
the thing that sticks out to me when you said that is probably the level of online posting. <laughs> I'm not going to say how, but it, it was very different. And um, it, I don't know, I just, I just didn't expect so much in terms of advertisement, I guess, on the online side compared to, I mean, it will make sense digitally since of COVID, but I guess I just didn't expect it to that level. Mm. I think t- talking in terms of online presence, I think, I think the, the biggest thing for me, and I've said this since I started with these guys last year, I just want to increase in terms of our engagement and how many students get involved with us. And I said I wanted four digit figures in terms of voting count for the election. And I was sat there on the night, uh, on the on the closing night with a few of the university staff who, who we were talking and we were just like waiting for it to tick over a thousand. And for us, that was the big kind of happy number. Like we hit over a thousand voters. And for me, I was like, it's done. I'm happy. You know, I don't care what happens. We had a thousand voters. We can have four people drawing you know I, i'm not bothered at that point but it was nice to see that large amount of engagement and i think going back to what tuesday said earlier i think it's because students realize officers don't run events it's actually they shape their course instead um i think people realize with the year they've had with covid how much influence the union officers have had this year so i think people i think people cared more it's probably the best way to put it i think i think they understood what officers did more so they understood why they were voting they're not just voting for their, for their friend because it's a name they recognise. They're, they're kind of voting on the points. And the people I've spoke to said they read a lot of manifestos this year, which was nice to hear as well. Um, I went out with a pokey stick and started attacking people. For, you know, social resistance, begging them to vote. But they said they didn't know what the election was about. I gave them a QR code, got them to read, you know, the manifestos and left them to it. And it's it was it was it was just that moment. You know, it's nice that people were actually taking time to read and, and look what's going on. I don't know whether anyone else has got anything to say. Everyone's very chill and quiet. Mm, that's going to have to change. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, on a personal level, it was more about, I think I didn't expect so many of my friends to be running. It was like six of us who all know each other who are all vying for the same votes. And that makes things incredibly difficult. So it sort of falls into what Joe said. There's a lot of people who run. Unfortunately for me, there's a lot of people who run who I knew very well. And we basically went through uni together. So it's kind of like, oh, great, this is fun. So it's nice in that respect, but it's also that, like, it made things a lot more in terms of pressure and challenging. And then how do you then deviate from that and try and get some other people externally to vote in? Well, it's, it's really always hard. And I think we've really struggled to try and uh, engage rookies in terms of, like, first years and trying to get them involved. And, you know, because they just haven't had that chance, really, to be here on campus and see what the experience is like and see what is here you know, in social events for gobbles and stuff like that. So, you know, I think that would have been, a. I reckon Connor's number would have been four digit fingers um, in the hundreds uh, if 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 we had that experience this year. I think you would have had maybe, maybe even hit 2,000, Connor, if you managed to get those uh, freshers more involved, maybe and stuck in, but who knows? We'll never know. Maybe next year we'll know because uh, we'll have that opportunity to engage, at least I, th- I hope so. We had around wow. those figures in the fir- in the first year we ran, so it was around 1900 in 20, 2018, was it 2018, 2019, somewhere there. It was up 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 to those ends. So hopefully, we'll we'll get there again. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, just make sure next year all of us go around with pokey sticks. <laughs> <laughs> um, if I guess you're running, you can't. <laughs> hey, <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> Um, I guess I'm going to then pick the questions to like the current officer team who are, who are unfortunately leaving us and can't run again, though Connor has tried many, many a time. Um, what is it you're going to miss most? What is it you're looking forward to? What's your next steps? I guess that's what I'm going to put out. We'll start with the first one first. What are you excited about uh, now that you're leaving? What, what are we excited about leaving? Yeah. I don't think What's you can put step? that in the... In the same, in the same kind you of. You can. Um, the next thing, step is always exciting. I, I think for me, and I've been saying this, everyone's like, "Oh, you're sad," and I'm like, "I'm like, yeah, I'm sad, but I've had a good two years." Um, and when you know you, you can't do something forever. And I think in a healthy way, I, I think I'm leaving at the right time. I think it's a, it's a, it's a good way to leave. I've done what I kind of came in to do. There's some parts I've missed. You know, I'm trying to ram into the last month and a half, but I think I'm excited to kind of see what happens next. Um, I'm still going to be studying part-time and around and about so I can still do you know my social side of my sports teams and stuff but um, I'm kind of happy to be moving on to a different uh, sector I guess so I'm moving away from working in education a bit more 
and going into more of a behind the scenes marketing role. So that's that's going to be quite fun. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to try something new. I feel like when you come here for a three year undergraduate degree and I've been here seven years, I need to leave. <laughs> Putting it bluntly. <laughs> Do you stay calm? Um, as, as me, obviously, I've, I've been an officer for two years now. Um, the learning curve has been this year, and I'm disappointed that there are still some some development opportunities that I, I would love to have taken this year, but because of COVID, it's not been possible. So but I'm still grateful for everything I have done. And the same with Connor, because of the year we've had, it's been difficult to try and focus on some of our manifesto points sometimes because of COVID lockdowns and stuff. So I am a little bit disappointed in that, but I've also been able to secure like, some really great things for the students despite that, I think. Um, moving forward, um, I am, looking to stay in the education sector as a well role because uh, considering that i have a, a a degree in computer games design but um yeah i just feel like education and especially like higher and further education is my thing so i'm looking more at the voicey kind of stuff whether that be from a union perspective or uh the institutional perspective mm -hmm. so lots of options and I am just really excited to see where it takes me. <laughs> nice, good. Yeah, um, I'm still around as well because I've got to finish my uh, third year of studying finally uh, and then I'm also going to be the network manager for LGBT network this year. So still around, still here, potentially running for officer next year. We'll see what happens because I still have another year that I can do it. Uh, because that it'd be really nice if I went again and I could do a lot more of the stuff that I didn't manage to get done this year because of good old Rona. <laughs> it really put like a stop to like a lot of what all of us wanted to do. I just yeah. made everything really difficult. Um, in all honesty, I'm excited to go back to a uni timetable and I can play video games in the daytime. Yeah, I get because you. Because it's a really dumb thing to be excited about. But sometimes I just want to wake up get a cup of tea and play video games for hours yeah. i can't really do that except on the weekend and i'm busy on the weekends yeah that makes sense, that makes sense. yeah it'd be good to see what happens next what happens in the next year and then after that as well mm -hmm. fair play fair play what would your leaving bits of advice be your best bit of advice and the first thing I'm going to go with is be a bit more cheery and talk more because you're going to be representing everyone and I might want to put a smile on your face. <laughs> Colin. So um, I kind of spoke about our election night for in a very short amount, but I think being an officer, you get wrapped up in trying to, trying to make everyone happy and trying to be a people pleaser. Um, and when you take Boris as one example, Boris is a very high state politician. He's very... Um, open in what he says and you kind of need to replicate that yourself so try not to focus on pleasing 30 people at a time or you know one whole department of people because you won't do it you, it's impossible um, and you'll only you'll only mentally wear yourself out trying to do it if you can deal with one issue one at a time it'll be easier for you to focus on that issue and get it done and then also make sure someone else is covered so just go one step at a time don't do 30 things at once don't try and run before you can walk just go one student at a time and that is the best piece of advice i'll give to anyone um mine is probably a little bit more personal towards like you as a team but self-care is important um remember that and make sure you remind that your teammates like if you think someone else is struggle going how can I help? What can I do? Think, things like that. It, it, it's just the little things because you can only act as strong as you all are together. If one person is struggling, then yeah, it, it's all about teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> You're spending too much time with Jamie. <laughs> Cut those hours down. <laughs> Carter? Don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah. So if even in the middle of like a uni meeting, if someone's running around like acronyms and stuff you don't understand, put your hand up, say, can someone explain to me what this means? 
because it it's okay and it also highlights to the uni that uh they need to not be talking so kind of like in an in it in an inaccessible way because if people in the room don't understand what's going on they can't make the best decisions uh, but then everyone in the union is also really really good for helping you with most things really we've got a really good staff network and um, everyone's willing to help you so just ask even if it's a stupid question no question's a wrong question no question's a stupid question just ask make sure you don't struggle yeah yeah that was that was going to be also the same one i i felt back is it's just be willing because the acronyms are the big one because you spend a good portion of the first two months trying to understand what the hell every little acronym means um and i think they have got better. I remember last year, I had um, the head of DTA pull me aside in a, in a private meeting. It was like, just to let you know, this is what you're going to see. This is how we structure out during meetings and board meetings. Da, 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 da. So, it's, you know, that you'll probably get this, hopefully the same the same thing with your schools um, moving forward. But yeah, don't, don't be afraid to ask. Um, Lisa's lovely, Ken's lovely, and Kev's. They're just all amazing. They're a great CEO team. So take, take every opportunity to learn from them if you can and when you can, because that's, that's where the real goal is, I think, in terms of your progression as an individual in this role is, is to see what they do and how they manage it. And they do very well at managing the politics of everything as well. You'll sit there and be like, oh, I'm raging about this one thing that somebody said on Facebook. And you're going to be like, I want to reply. I want to say this. And they're going to be like, yeah, let's think about that. Let's reword it. Let's rephrase it. Send it to Jamie. Jamie will send it to Sabrina. Sabrina will send it back to you. Then they send it to Lisa. And Lisa will go, see, how much easier is that? Now, nobody can forget sued or told off or kicking off or it's just kind of just being the voice uh, and just being very like generic as much as you can try and help not instigate more arguments and just try and be like as, as kind of inclusive as possible i think for me it's like also online it's a very very um very big role online now because of covid and i i'm pretty sure there's big plans to continue that sort of engagement online so for instance with the mature parent and care network i'm constantly putting out videos and there's constantly issues going on there so you you constantly just got to kind of be as, as helpful as you can if you can't try and someone else will pick up the slack where you got you haven't maybe seen a comment here or a comment there where it might fit under your remit so it's just being sure that you're there and nice and not getting pissed at everyone and saying it very obviously in the chats going back because that can get really it can get to you sometimes especially when people are kicking off um trust me tuesday has many many a people and experience um but yeah that's kind of it really um we're kind of rounding off is there any final words from anybody and that you want to know is there anything you want to choose the car wants to maybe pass on in terms of the knowledge I feel like I've got Kung Fu Panda in my head at the moment with the first film with the turtle guy where he sat with Poe and he's like, you know, giving him this big wisdom talk. And I can't remember what he says now, so I'm just clutching at the straws. But it's something like, just be you. Just be you. <laughs> you don't need to be someone else. On Welcome Week, if you're acting like something completely different to what you are, they're not going to recognise you halfway through the year. Um, and your face is going to be on the side of the building, guys. So you kind of need to... Make sure you you know you're being the same person that's on the side of that building, really. Um, just be approachable. Um, you'll 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 get this video sent to you when you first start, which is called the lollipop video. Um, it's a really good video about creating lollipop modes for students for students. Um, and now it just sounds like mumbo jumbo at the moment, but when you watch it, you'll completely understand where we're coming from. You need to create these lollipop moments for students that they remember on their first day. You'll be the first faces they'll see. You know you'll you'll be greeting them. And you just need to make it memorable and you'll be dealing with parents as well and carers and things like that so you, you, you'll open up and and you just need to, to be loose and be relaxed don't be tense don't be nervous i know that's easier said than done um but you'll you'll hit the ground as soon as you kind of get over that first hurdle of just being comfortable in yourself you'll be fine um i think my my singular piece of advice that i that is the one thing I will tell officers every time or anyone who's considering it is never, ever, ever compare yourself to previous officers. Never do it. It's not worth it at all. I spent a good three months of this year comparing myself to previous officers and wondered why I wasn't being able to proactively complete things because I was constantly going, well, so-and-so wouldn't do it like that. So why am I doing it like, and so-and-so wouldn't do it like that. So why am I doing it like that? Um, 
you feel like this big pressure to fill the shoes of the team before you or the team before them or other people who you remember distinctly from when you first joined you aren't them you're hannah blackburn you're an esu choto you're hayden sang and you're aunt wallace you know that's who you are and go with it don't don't listen to other people when they go well so and so did it better absolutely not do you and that's that's my parting gift <laughs> that little pep talk <laughs> That's so awesome. I feel like I need to find something now, but I, I can't really think of anything. I don't do on the spot very well. Mm -hmm. well uh, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I just, I think, you know, it's that's it. I think she was a nail on nail and spoke for everyone. You just got to be who you are. And you'll know pretty quickly whether or not people take to it or not. But they tend to, that's why they voted you in. So I won't worry too much about it. Um, you know, and it's not about being the right guy for the job straight away. It's about learning how to become the right guy for the job. That, that's, how, that's what I'll say. You're not, you're not meant to know it straight away. It's not what it's about. It's about learning how to, to do your role. Um, and then hopefully by January, you're pretty fluid with it. Um, I've put Master Ugwe's video in the chat because I feel it's very important for everyone to watch it and listen. And because it's one of my favorite films. <laughs> Amazing. All right, we'll end it there. Thank you very much for everything, guys. And we will be back with the next podcast in a few weeks' time. Cheers now. Bye. Bye. Bye.